Greetings Programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Appointment with Fear. When last we left our hero, The Cure, he had had a very interesting first day of heroism. He found out that he has three days to find the location of a meeting of supervillains known as Fear. He stopped a gang known as the Alchemist from robbing a bank. And he talked down a villain known as the Tormentor from doing a suicide run behind the controls of a passenger plane. So very interesting day. We actually missed um, our day at work as a mild-mannered uh, news reporter. And this is the next day. So let's get to it and see what trouble we can get into. And what, you know, what evil needs justice smeared upon it. The next morning, you set off for work early. You decide to travel on the subway to make sure you get there on time. On the subway, you find the one seat that's free and are about to slump into it when... Help! Pickpocket! Great. Just what I needed. You force your way through the crowd on the busy train. As you reach the pickpocket's victim... Oh, wow. So, these are all of our, uh... The Crime Watch beeps. What now? Sorry about that. All the achievements popped up suddenly. Rad Square. Hurry. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. The train is pulling into a station. You have to change trains immediately if you get, want to get to Rad Square. Well, do we change trains, apprehend the pickpocket, or ignore everything and go to work? I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and apprehend the pit pocket. You rush up to the puny-looking, bespectacled man who is shaking with fright. He points to a man running up through the next carriage. There! He, he's stolen my wallet! You race after him. No one else moves. They don't want to get involved. And that's the problem with some of these big cities, man. That's no lie. Test my skill. You sprint after the thief. And you are successful. I guess the Gadgeteer is like Batman. He's just really good physically. You gain ground and catch up with the pickpocket. You catch hold of his jacket and he runs out the door. As you grab him, he spins round to face you and draws out a knife. You are unhurt. Stamina of 20. The pickpocket grins at you with a stamina of 6. So we can do a punch to the head for 2 damage. We can actuate a radioactive vacuum for 4. Or initialize a vacuum pack screwdriver. He's got a stamina of 6. We can take him out in one shot if we do this. So let's go ahead and do that. You point the vacuum pack screwdriver right at the pickpocket's cheek. Oh, the cheek's hit. <laughs> you inflicted 6 damage points. <laughs> Flawless victory. You just earned a fear card. And we have no luck points, so we're going to have to unwrap the card now. Bodyguard cool deal with the final blow the pickpocket collapses to the carriage floor Com commuters on the train spontaneously applaud you stopped him thank you sir haha <laughs> thank you sir you're almost as good as the cure <laughs> if only he knew that he was standing right in front of him yeah with that disguise there's no way you could tell you go through the man's pockets to retrieve the wallet what strange things he's carrying with him Along with the wallet, you find a gum packet which contained a crumpled piece of paper, a tape cassette, and a map. The door opens and a security guard approaches. What's going on here? You'll have only a moment to grab one of these items. What will it be? Uh, let's get the cassette tape. You sit down next to the kid listening to a Walkman. Excuse me, son. May I borrow that for a moment? He happily lends it to you. If only all residents of Titan City could be so helpful. It seems to be a recording of a televo conversation between a man and a woman. Most of the recording is garbled. The last bit can be clearly heard, though. The conversation ends... Don't worry. Why not? Time's running out. The treasures are being collected and replaced by our agent, Mustafa Karim. We will have them all soon. And then... We will meet the day after tomorrow on board the yacht. Okay, bye. Okay, Mustafa Kareem was said to be a suspicious agent on that cassette tape. And gained a luck point. Awesome. Interesting stuff. This Mustafa Kareem sounds like a dubious character, and if you couldn't tell by that picture. And cassette clue. Listen to a mysterious message on a cassette tape. Far out. You'd better be off to work. Can't be late again. The train stops at Grim Street Station. You get off to go to work. At the office. So we are definitely in the 80s. We have a cassette and look at that old IBM computer. You try to settle into your desk discreetly. No such luck. 
Get in here at once! You creep into his office, mumbling excuses for being late again. Enough! What do you think we were running here, a charity? Do you suppose I should be grateful that you even grace us with your presence? I just... Very noble of you indeed, even bother coming in at all. You can have the rest of the day off, without pay. But I... And if you're not in first thing tomorrow morning, you can start looking for another job. You slink out of his office with your tail between your legs. How can I tell him what I've been doing? And now you've been suspended for a day. Where will you go? Now we can spend the day at the Wisneyland Amusement Park or go downtown, perhaps do some shopping. Uh, let's go downtown. Strolling downtown. Your first stop at the bank to... Your first stop at the bank to get some cash. Next stop is a pizza parlor for a bite to eat. Egg and beetroot, my favorite. Ugh, cure. You take a stool facing out across Banner Street and watch the shoppers passing as you eat your pizza. Oh hey, that's Drew Swain over there. Swain is a retired millionaire who made his fortune manufacturing the collection tins used by charities. He steps into a bakery. When he comes out, something strange happens. He takes a step forward and suddenly freezes, held like a statue in an off-balance pose. What's happened to Swain? A blue van draws, draws up and obscures your view. When it drives off, he's gone. You saw it with your eyes, but it happened so quickly that you are now a long way behind the kidnappers. Will you dash to the toilets in the back of the shop and change costume? Hmm. Yeah, let's follow the van. You race down the street after the van. You fiends! Come back here with Mr. Swain! But by now it's long gone. Give up and resume shopping. You change back into your street clothes. Hopefully I can get a bed apiece for the rest of the day. There are plenty of shops to visit in Titan City. Two, uh, two catch your eye immediately. Virgin Records and Epiphanies, the famous jewelers. Perhaps I could pick up a new record? Or maybe something nice for Aunt Florence. Uh, well, let's, I guess we look in the window of Epiphanies. You notice a familiar figure taking an unhealthy interest in the diamond rings. Porcelain Percy. After betraying a mob boss, his teeth were filed down and had to be replaced with porcelain caps. Ow. You duck into an alley and change into the cure. Percy stands aside nervously as you step up to the window. You decide to have some fun. Well, well, well. If it isn't Porcelain Percy. Cure! I didn't do nothing, just just window shopping. I heard you had something to do with the smash and grab at DeLager's Jewelers last week. No way! You can't prove nothing! I was visiting my ma! Maybe I should just hand you over to Big Ben and the Slicer. It would save the police some trouble. Porcelain Perry starts to sweat profusely. Oh, have a heart cure. Just forget you saw me. I'll make it worth your while. How so? The poisoner's back. He's going to poison everyone from the reservoir. I don't want my mom to get sick cure. It ain't that bad. Or I ain't that bad. Porcelain Perry mentioned that the poisoner may be up to no good at the Titan City Reservoir. Came to luck point? Go on, scram, Percy, before I change my mind. You got a cure. You don't have to tell me twice. Interrogate Porcelain Perry. Nothing but the tooth. Percy runs off down the street. What now, Cure? Well, let's check my crime watch. I mean, we're in costume now. You check your crime watch to see if there's anything else happening. Silence. He remains silent. Now might be a good time to check over any clues you found today. Remember, you can do this at any time by opening the menu and selecting clues. Well, let's go ahead and look at our clues. Here are all the clues you've currently gathered. Mustafa Karim is said to be a suspicious agent on that cassette tape. Porcelain Perry mentioned that the po Poisoner may be up to no good at the Titan City Reservoir. And the three villains' identities. <laughs> that was awesome. You check your crime watch to see if there's anything else happening. Silence. Okay. So let's go ahead and get through here. With nothing else to do today, you head for home. At home. You get home and enjoy a delicious meal. Whew, how exhausting. Being the cure sure isn't easy. It's tiring trying to save the world every day. Gain six stamina. You are relieved to finally get into bed. The next morning, you leave for work early. Perhaps I should leave this wretched crime watch behind. If I miss more work, there'll be no job to go back to. But your fears are unwarranted. 
To your utter amazement, the crime watch is silent. That is... That is good. And strange. You manage to make it into the office before most of the staff, and you have your head down when you hear the office door slam. What kind of an office am I running? People turning up late, no one does their work, and... And... For the first time, Jonah is speechless. At lunchtime, you catch up on the day's news on the Teletext TV. Two stories catch your attention. One is a strange attack in Abedin Park. A woman has been seriously mauled by what she calls a monster. However, a specialist at the hospital thinks the claw marks of an animal of, or thinks the claw marks of an animal of some kind. The second story is a man who had his chest crushed on the grounds of the Natural History Museum. There's no clues as to who or what is responsible, as if it is simply whatever caused the man's death has vanished. Both incidents are being investigated by the police. That's strange. Perhaps it's time for the cure to do a little investigation of his own. You change into cure and set off to make inquiries. Well, where do you go from here? The Natural History Museum, the Titan Zoo, or Warnham and Whaley's Traveling Circus? Um... Let's check the crime scene at the Natural History Museum. The curator of the Natural History Museum greets you warmly. Hello there, Cure. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Would you be able to help me around the exhibits? Most certainly. They are my pride and joy. I'm so lucky to work here. Well, he certainly seems to enjoy his job. So, Cure, what do you do now? Hmm. Ask him to show you the model reconstructions of dinosaurs. Ask him to show you the large mammals section. Let's check the large mammals section. The curator takes you round the stuffed exhibits. As you can see, Cure, our museum is full of wonderful exhibits. Yes, quite interesting. Gorillas, rhinos, great cats, and even a whale. You examine them with interest. Two in particular catch your attention. One of the tigers has dried blood on its claws. Ooh? But is it human or animal, and how long has it been there? Oh, yes, that's right. We had to move the elephant into the ground floor of private exhibit rooms yesterday for cleaning. What is your next move? Well, the blood on the tiger's claws are interesting. Let's pursue my investigation of those. The curator is mildly amused at your suggestion that his stuffed animals could have anything to do with the killings. I see. The elephant stepped off his pedestal and told his cleaners, Excuse me, won't you? I'm just off to go for a stroll among around the grounds. I didn't say. And you think the tiger somehow passed right through its glass cage, came downstairs, but through the crowds and didn't notice anything odd, left for a morning in Abedin Park and then returned at lunchtime? It was just... I thought you were superhero types were supposed to be bright. Hey. You feel a little foolish for even making the suggestion. Ouch. Minus one to hero points. Where do you go from here? Uh, let's try somewhere else. You change back into your street clothes and set off. Ah, okay, finally. Yet another alert from your crime watch. Okay, Jerry, where am I going this time? Museum of Egyptian Heritage. What's your next move? Oh, um, I think the guy, what's his name, is going to, uh be there. Follow its advice and head for the Egyptian Museum downtown. Museum of Egyptian Heritage. The Museum of Egyptian Heritage is in Midtown area. Everything seems perfectly normal when you enter and make for the head curator's office. Dr. Kabla is an elderly professor type with white hair and a thick white mustache that hangs over his mouth. He's surprised to see you. I was told to come here immediately. Is there a problem, doctor? Oh, I don't think so, Cure. I'm pretty sure that everything is in order. I will double-check all the treasures, though, just to make sure nothing has disappeared, eh? What courageous action do you take next, Cure? Hmm... Tell him to double-check the treasures. Weren't they after a jewel or something? He studies the closed-circuit security screens, which are focused on the main treasures in his collection. Everything seems to be in order. But he does study one screen rather closely. It is a figurehead of the god Amun-Ra, festooned with golden jewelry. Hmm, I'm quite confident there's supposed to be a pair of golden earrings on the idol. Let's, what courageous action do you take next, Cure? Hmm. Let's, uh, check out the figurehead of Amun-Ra. You rush to the idol and check for the earrings. There are none there. The professor thumbs through the catalog to double-check the idol. Er, ahem, my mistake. This idol does not have earrings at all. My, my, I'm getting very forgetful at my old age. A false alarm. Looks like all is well after all. You decide not to waste any further time here. 
Well, looks like a lot of dead ends today. Let's leave the museum. Well, I don't know who Jerry the Grass is. Visit the Titan Central Library to do some research into their criminology section. That sounds like a very Batman thing to do. Let's go with that. At the Titan City Library, a huge crowd is gathered around Titan City Library. Please, everyone, stay back. Keep away for your own safety. Out of the way! We need to get through! The police are trying to simultaneously perform crowd control and let in the fire department and army. The army? What on earth is happening? Your question is answered when a third floor window smashes. The smash is followed by screams as two bodies come hurtling out of the broken window, followed by a huge bookshelf. Books and glass rain down on the terrified crowds, followed by an unsettling sound. <laughs> oh, Cure, are we glad to see you. What's going on in there? Some sort of creature is in there. They've called it the Devastator. Looks like something not of this earth. It's a huge brute. I'd say it's made from rock. You rush into the building and find the creature on the third floor. Your jaw drops. What in the name of Titan City are you? You're like nothing I've ever seen. <laughs> a Devastator does seem to be made from rock rather than living flesh, as it stands some four meters high. Something has enraged it and is destroying everything in sight, pushing over huge shelves of books and smashing tables and chairs. <laughs> what now, Cure? Uh, I'll try and analyze the creature. Best know how to beat it. You quickly produce a special analyzer and use it on the creature. It seems the police chief's guess was probably not far from the truth. The creature seems to be made out of some sort of rock. But this is fantastic! Your analyzer tells you the nearest equivalent is the substance found in fallen meteors. But how will you attempt to defeat it? Well, let's take it on barehanded. You brace yourself for combat with this rocky creature. Cease your destruction in this palace of knowledge. <laughs> Devastator roars wildly, a stamina of 12. Okay, well, we have a stamina of 20. Let's engage a spinning circuit board. It's difficult, but it'll do 6 damage. You point the spinning circuit board on the Devastator's head. Oh, screaming at the Devastator, you miscalculate. The Devastator simply dodges your circuit board. Looks like we're actually going to have a real fight now. The Devastator lunges to grab you, right at your right arm. Ooh, the Devastator lands a grab. And we take two points of damage. You shake your head to clear your vision. That grab hurt. Well, let's do... Let's deploy a Nano stubble matic Four damage. You aim the Nano stubble matic towards the Devastator's left eye socket. Uh, targeting toward the Devastator, the stubble matic misfires. Courageously dodging your Nano stubble matic the Devastator steps up. The Devastator leads in with a grab to your head. Oh, he landed a grab to the head. For another two points. I'm not doing a good job here. <laughs> You're in good health. Let's uh, switch on a bio-engineered pliers. You aim at the toward the Devastator's foot. There we go. The Devastator's foot is hit. For a mighty four points, that's good. Your bioengineer's pliers cause the Devastator to stagger. And he throw he leans in with a throw to your toe. The Devastator is too slow and the throw is way off. Good. Viciously dodging the throw, you rush forward to where another attack. Let's do that again. Activate a vacuum-packed igniter. You target the vacuum-packed igniter right at the Devastator's nose. Oh, the igniter malfunctioned. The Devastator is unharmed. He lunges to kick me right in my toe. And he kicked me in the toe. For two points. <laughs> robble, robble. Let's try that again. Let's deploy a beepy blinker. I knew this was going to be a tough fight. I mean, he's made out of rock. I'm not Superman, you know. You direct the blinky blinker, or the beepy blinker toward the Devastator's eyes. Ah, his eyes hit. For four damage. A shove, for goodness. The Devastator leans in with a punch to your leg. Ooh, he landed a punch. For another two points, you stumble back in pain after the punch. You have some injuries. Well, that's to be... That's to be expected. Let's initialize a steel-cut vacuum. You focus the steel-cut vacuum toward the Devastator's left arm. Oh, it malfunctioned. Arg, your left arm was too fast for me. 
Devastator leans in with a slice to your hair. Not my hair. Oh, he hit. For another two points. All right, I have some injuries. My health is half down. We need, we need to hit him at least one more time. Let's flip on an infrared hammer. The hammer sputters. Good grief. Your knee was too fast for me. Now he's going to chop you, or chop me, right in the leg. And he hits again. Hells, bells. You stumble back in pain. You are very badly injured. Let's uh, try a mega circuit board. Come on, man. Just one more shot. There we go. For four damage, and that should take him out. Thud. With a final roar, the rock-like devastator shatters into pieces. It seems you took things for granite. Oh, cure. I have no problem with you getting hurt now. And we just earned a fear card. Uh, let's go ahead and spend luck points. And unwrap the card. Titanium Cyborg. You're greeted by heroic applause from the crowd as you step from the library. Badly beaten. The struggle has been a tough one, but you have defeated the strange creature. And gained five hero points. Good job, Cure. You take a moment to soak up the adulation from the crowd. There are times when being Cure is great. What a battle. That's no joke. You had better avoid any more super exploits for a while. You're exhausted after your titanic struggle. What do you do now, hero? Um, I guess I'm going to visit my elderly aunt. Get some, you know, some pie or cookies. Your aunt lives in Cockney Green, a pleasant suburban district to the east of the Titan Center. The bus drop, the bus drops you off at the Cockney Cemetery, leaving you with a five-minute walk to her house. What now, Cure? Uh, let's take a leisurely stroll around the outside of the cemetery. I can't really afford to get in any more, uh, fights. Down the street. The cool air is refreshing and allows you to gather your thoughts. You must locate the fear meeting. Otherwise, you'll never be able to stop their master plan. If only I knew where it was to be held, and... Thump. Ugh. You feel a heavy blow across the back of your head, and you drop to your knees. Just get the money, and let's get going. Quick. You got it. A hand searches through your pockets for your cash. Though groggy, you know what is happening. I'm being mugged. I could fight back, but my secret identity... You could let them think they have knocked you out. I don't have much on me anyway, after all. What do you do now? Well, I don't want to give up my secret identity. I'm going to go ahead and let them rob me. You feign unconsciousness and lie on the ground. I'd better let them mug me. I can't let them discover that I'm really a cure. You seethe inwardly as they take your week's wages. Okay, minus one to hero points. That's okay, though. A car pulls up and they leap inside. Jeez, that's all he had? Yeah, what a skin flint. As they drive up, you get up and dust yourself er, off. At least I can memorize the license plate number for the police. Feeling a lot poorer, you head off to visit Aunt Florence. Should have went through the cemetery. You arrive at Aunt Florence's house. She greets you at the door with a hug. Oh, how wonderful to see you, dear. You're always busy. And why are you so untidy? Sorry, Aunt Florence. Things have been getting out of hand lately. Never mind that. Come in, come in. I was just putting on the kettle. She fusses about making you tea and offering you cream cakes. Ah, cake! Thank you. I'm exhausted. You do too much. Your job, all this time with me. You're not the cure, you know. You're too tired to argue. You decide to spend the night there rather than face the long journey home. And we gain six stamina points, so we're back to 16, I think? Or 14. You fall asleep as soon as your head touches the pillow. The next morning, a bright and sunny Saturday greets you. All right. Well, that's the next day, guys, and we had some missteps. We had some... Stopped a pit pocket and took on a rock monster, so... You know, a little a little bad, but quite a bit of good, too. We definitely need to find out where that fear meeting's going. But I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, go ahead and click like down below. Uh, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That'd be a big help, and we'll catch you next time. Later days, everyone.